so excited for this show. So am I. Yeah, we, we have a celebrity. celebrity on our show. Hi, Jane, Jane Unchained. Jane Mitchell. Jane Unchained, how's it going? I am doing great here in sunny Southern California. Um, just surviving. <laughs> trying to stay safe uh, using a mask uh, and eating a lot of healthy plant-based foods and uh, getting an extra dose of turmeric so that uh, I am strong as we go through this crisis. Yeah. Right. That's a you got to keep idea. healthy for sure, right? How is it down in California? Yeah. Is it like lockdown? Are you allowed to go out, do stuff still? Well, you know, it changes day to day. Um, people are supposed to wear masks outside. A lot of people are not doing that. And right. uh, it's when I walk my four dogs, it's kind of a little bit of a, a little Hi. bit of a, like a, Cutie. A, spy, a spy movie. I dive here, there, and everywhere to avoid people who are um not wearing masks but uh you know all this started because of our abuse of animals um this is a zoonotic disease as was sars as is mad cow disease avian flu um swine flu and now the world needs to wake up and mother nature is sending us a message Either you stop abusing animals, stop uh, treating this world like a giant uh, trash dump that you can just destroy and pillage, or you're done because the next pandemic sure. could be even worse. So we have to listen to Mother Nature, and humans are not pure victims. My heart goes out to everybody who's lost a loved one, who's lost a job, but we also have to look in the mirror, and we have to say to ourselves, you know, what is the message here? And the message, as I see it from nature, is clear. Um, we need to respect other beings on this planet. We don't own this planet and everything else is just a unit of production to be exploited. Uh, this is a sociopathic system. Industrialized animal agriculture is a sociopathic system. And um, it has to end. And Mm -hmm. If there's any good that comes out of this pain and suffering, it will be the end of industrialized agriculture. It is completely unsustainable. And now you're seeing uh, people who used to turn a blind eye to this issue finally looking at it. You see Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker. Cory Booker is a vegan U.S. senator from New Jersey. And Elizabeth Warren hadn't really been too uh, warm to this issue, but now in light of workers dying in slaughterhouses around the United States, and it's also happening in Canada and Europe and everywhere else because of the working conditions, now she and Cory Booker have joined together two U.S. senators to propose phasing out factory farming. Unfortunately, the timeline, 2040, we don't have until 2040. We have to do it sooner, <laughs> but it's a start. It's a start. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, please tell our audience more about yourself because there are also some people that never heard about you and they should. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> but, oh, you scared um, me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I was born in Manhattan. I went to NYU and then I was a journalist. I worked in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, back in New York as a local news anchor. Then um, in L.A. as a as an anchor. And uh, then I went to syndicated TV. I was on a show called Celebrity Justice. Then I had my own show on CNN Headline News for six years from 2008 to 2014. And so along the way, I was born into a um, we were primarily pescatarian household. My mom uh, was from Puerto Rico. Um, that's why my little. My little rescue, Rico, one of my four, Aww. one of my five, Aww. actually, if you include my cat, if you Puerto Rico. And Aww. she had a pet pig. She was born in 1916. And when she was about, I guess, seven, she had a pet pig. She thought this was her pet pig and her friend. And the pig was killed for food. And she Aww. fainted and became very distraught. And she shunned meat from that point on. She came to New York. She met my dad, who became an advertising executive. He was Irish. And uh, he was a meat eater until he met my mother and he cut out the meat pretty much. Like I saw him once or twice grab, you know, a slice of something at a holiday, but we didn't have meat in our house. We didn't buy meat. Uh, we thought we were vegetarians, believe it or not, <laughs> kind of. Right. But we ate fish, we ate dairy, we ate eggs, we ate honey. 
anyway, as I grew older and was out there in the world, in Philadelphia, I remember um, I saw a video that somebody gave me of head injury experiments on monkeys that was so evil that um, it was life changing. I said, this is just morally wrong and something has to be done about it. You know, it opened my eyes to the whole issue of how animals are tortured. And I hadn't really thought about it that much before, even though I had kind of gotten this sense growing up very much that animals, you know, connecting food with with animals and knowing that we didn't eat chickens and we didn't eat uh, cows and we didn't eat pigs. But um, after seeing that video, I was like, wow, that's wrong. It's got to end. So I didn't really know what to do about it. And then I ended up uh, at this show called Celebrity Justice. Well, let me just tell you how it went vegan. I was working at Paramount Studios in Hollywood as an anchor. And uh, by that point, I was pretty much vegetarian, you know, uh, getting gotten rid of the, uh, the fish anyway. But I was a lacto-ovo vegetarian. Right. And this uh, guy, Howard Lyman, came in to do an oh, interview. Yeah. He's Howard awesome. Lyman, yeah. Yeah, he had been on Oprah. He was a fourth generation cattle rancher who got very ill and he made a pact with God. And he said, God, if you get me out of this surgery alive, I will reveal the secret horrors of my industry. And he survived the surgery. He became a vegan activist. He wrote a book called Mad Cowboy. He went on Oprah and he revealed the disgusting things that are that are done to animals in the course of industrialized agriculture. And that's when Oprah famously said, that just stopped me cold from eating another burger. That was her line. And then the mm-hmm. cattlemen sued her. This is like 20, it's almost a quarter of a century ago. This is about 24 years ago, approximately. Right. So anyway, um, that was a big hullabaloo. And Howard Lyman was doing a book tour and he came in and I interviewed him. And afterwards, he and his publicist, Mara Nealon, who's a fierce vegan activist, who's <laughs> now a good friend, came up to my cubicle and they said, we hear you're a vegetarian. And I said, yes. And they said, do you eat dairy? And I kind of hung my head because he had just told me these horror stories of babies being ripped from their mothers and the boys being turned into veal or veal calves or shot in the head or thrown on dead piles. And I I said, yes. And then they pointed their finger at my nose and they said, liquid <laughs> meat, liquid meat. Whoa. Whoa. And, and that was the moment I went vegan. Wow. They confronted me. And so when they say, don't confront people, just be oh so very polite, sometimes we're missing opportunities when we don't confront people. If they had just said, well, maybe you could, should consider um, not eating dairy because there's cruelty, and I probably wouldn't have gotten it. Right. They stuck mm-hmm. their finger right in my nose, and they said, liquid well, meat. And that was about, about 24 years ago. I can't remember. I, I'm 25 years sober. This past April. Congrats. Congratulations. So, wow. yeah. Thank you. I know that it was after I got sober. And I know that was around the time that the book tour was happening. Because I looked it up on Wikipedia. When was that book out? I wish <laughs> I had my vegan date the way I have my sobriety date. Right. Just put and, it together. And, yeah. Just make one. And it goes hand it. in hand anyways. You know, you're like a yeah. vegan straight edge. Or together, or, right? Yeah. So it just goes hand in hand. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's no accident that, um, you know, Look, people who have to go in there and slaughter animals uh, five days a week and, and, you know, what a horrible job. And virtually mm-hmm. no native-born Americans do it. Mm-hmm. It's mostly immigrants, you know, people who are downtrodden so that other people around here can walk around and say they're animal lovers and pat themselves on the back and him said him so I'm such a good person. Right. Um, you know, that's the thing about the COVID thing. It's exposing the truth to people. And just this morning, I looked on Yahoo News. I wake up, I take my, I call it my coronavirus concoction. I have uh, <laughs> maca and uh, turmeric and all sorts of things that Super I put foods. in a little thing and I drink it to, to ward off the whatever. The coronies, <laughs> we call it the yeah. coronies. Right. Yeah. And I sat down with my coffee from Brewing Good, which I urge everybody, 10% of their um, uh, revenue goes to animal sanctuaries. Great wow. coffee. I met them at the Animal Rights Conference and I just order it. It comes in every month. I got six because I'm a coffee fiend. <laughs> well, Brewing Good. We need to create a veganomy. We need to create a veganomy. Vegans need to buy from other vegans. 
until this happened, I had a vegan hairdresser or a vegan handyman, and I will go back to them as soon as this is over. My hair, I'm wearing a cap because it's the Jane Unchained News Network, which is our 501c3 nonprofit um, citizen journalist for animals, people, and the planet. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, we need to create a veganomy. I'm about to launch uh, with a partner who's a software designer, uh, a vegan's uh, basically, it's going to be like a, a next door for vegans. Not exactly the same, of course, different different model, but it, to give people a sense of what it would allow people to do, connect with vegans in their neighborhood. We need to um, create a veganomy. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of things that are happening in that regard. But um, yeah, anyway, that's how I went vegan uh, 25 years ago. And then I started working in news. Um, a show, a tabloid show called Celebrity Justice. I got out of local news and I started working at this tabloid show. Mm -hmm. And that was the precursor to TMZ. And every morning mm -hmm. at like seven in the morning, Harvey Levin would say, where's the celebrity? Where's the justice? And uh, it was a grueling job. I don't think I've ever worked harder. And mm -hmm. uh, I suddenly realized, wait a second, celebrities don't like tabloid shows, but if I work with PETA, and get celebrities to talk about their causes, that's the justice, and then there's, where's the celebrity? The celebrity is a celebrity, the justice is the justice. Right. And I was able to, thanks to working with PETA, which is the most incredible organization on the planet, I was able to um, get a lot of celebrities to talk about their causes. Even Robert Redford talked to us about the military sonar on the whales. Wow. So that kind of started my journey to using journalism to speak for animals. Then when I got the show on CNN Headline News, um, I asked very politely, would you mind if I did a little animal segment once a week? And they, they thought about it and they said, no, we don't see a problem with that. They, maybe they thought I was gonna do pet adoptions, which I did occasionally, right, Rico? <laughs> but um, I suddenly started to do uh, animal rights on, on television, uh, national, global television. I think it was seen in 39 countries showing pig gestation crates, showing how they chop off the tails of the pigs and they de-beak the chickens and they, you know, just the horrors. It's, it's, it's evil. Right. Industrialized agriculture, animal agriculture is morally wrong. I've never been more clear about anything in my entire life. It is the leading cause of, well, now there's a new white paper that says it's the leading cause of climate change. Certainly is a leading cause. Nobody disputes that. Uh, leading cause of ha the leading cause of habitat destruction, wildlife extinction, human world hunger, because we're only 7.8 billion animals, and we're eating, and uh, the human race is is eating. Some say 54 billion, some say 70 billion. That's just land animals, not including fish. If you put it in fish, it's the trillions. So, um, it's mm -hmm. it's unsustainable. It's morally wrong. It's cruel. It's evil. It's bad for human health. It's causing the leading killers up until COVID and COVID. I don't care what the Chinese CDC says. Uh, I think that's a political thing now where they're saying it didn't come in from the seafood market. It's a zoonotic disease. The people who were initially sick came from the market. And uh, they said now, uh, well, you know, we studied the animals and they don't have the disease. We just found it in the sewage. Yeah, the animals who had the disease were killed and eaten already. Right. So, uh, it, it, yeah, like that. So anyway... Um, after doing that for six years and doing those stories, and I had a lot of the leading um, uh, animal rights people, leading organizations on, Humane Society, PETA, um, Mercy for Animals, uh, Nathan Runkle, who's now Milo Runkle, was on quite often, um, and a lot of stars like Joanna Krupa and Katie Clary, who are animal lovers. So we did that for six years, and then that show wrapped up, and then I decided, well... Um, let's go to some protests. Actually, it was my girlfriend at the time, who's still a dear friend, who said, now, you're on chain, Jane, you can go to protests, because we could never go to protests. When you're a journalist, right. you can report on them, but you can't participate in them. Right. Sure. So I started yeah. going to the protests, and uh, it was in New York, it was very cold, and I started seeing, okay, people are protesting, nobody's documenting it, nobody's really watching, because it's so cold, everybody's rushing to get indoors. <laughs> There's a missing piece to this. If a tree falls and no one hears it, does it make a sound? So I said, let me start using my journalistic techniques. I started with a GoPro camera 
and I started recording these protests. And I remember the first one we covered was like, I think it was early 2015. And uh, it was in Brooklyn outside of Staples Center where Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus was coming. There were about 250, 200 uh, animal rights protesters. Uh, again, I was the only one documenting it. It was nine degrees. I'll never forget because I was so cold. And I looked and I, I was shaking, actually. And I said, is it worth is this worth it? This is one of my first reports. And I thought, yes, yes, because all these people are standing out here in the cold, shaking, holding their signs. The least I can do is record it. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, that was a great moment because not be, not not due to anything that I'm doing, but have faith. Just do the next indicated thing and stay out of the results. Things will happen if you plow ahead. So flash forward, I'm not saying it's PETA and many, many other organizations that put Ringlings out of business. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking credit for anything, but look how <laughs> the world unfolds. Now Ringlings is out of business. And we thought it was a lost cause when we were standing there in nine degree weather, shaking and videotaping. Um, it wasn't a lost cause. And look what's happening now. The world's waking up to the horrors of animal agriculture. Right. People are my neighbor just said she's vegan this, vegan that. She's not a vegan, but she was talking to me about I was just walking my dogs and she's like, Yeah, we go to this place and we get vegan um coconut balls and we get vegan and, and it was it was really cute. <laughs> she was she was showing off that she's eating vegan. It doesn't mean she is a vegan. She's right. not, you know, going to a protest, but this is how change happens. It's it's a process, not an event. It and is, the process yeah. is accelerating right now. Let's hope so. Mm-hmm. Definitely in like all these big cities, me- people get it more, I feel. But let's say if you're somewhere remote and you don't even have internet access, that's the tricky part, I feel. You know? And you don't have any community, like no vegan community and stuff. That's where it gets tricky, right? That's why I'm creating Plant-Based Neighbor. Nice. That's um, awesome. We're going to be launching Plant-Based Neighbor within the next couple of weeks for National Animal Rights Day. Um National Animal Rights Day, which was founded by Ayla Morian, who's a buddy of mine here in L.A. And, um, of course, that's a global event. Now it's going to be virtual. It's next weekend. And, uh, I mean, this is obviously an evergreen, but National Animal Rights Day happens every year in uh, June. So Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to launch Plant-Based Neighbor. Go to plantbasedneighbor.com and sign up, and you will soon, we're going to create a network where everybody can connect with their plant-based neighbors. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a great idea. And that's worldwide. Worldwide? Well, it's, um, I know you're starting. In I apologize. <laughs> it's starting in the U.S., but it will, we hope to make it worldwide. You know, That'd I'm not great. the software yeah. developer, but he started with the American zip codes, and we're hoping to um, expand it. But it's, it's an idea whose time has come. Yeah. And uh, then just continuing on from what we did. So we started Jane Unchained. Um, at first, it was just a money pit. So I decided <laughs> to turn it into a nonprofit because nice. it, it's very funny. All my non-vegan friends, the only thing they could ask about. So I started recording these videos. Right. And right. And me and my at the time girlfriend were staying up till like three in the morning, editing everything. And it was exhausting. And just uh, Jane Unchained dot com. You know, it was like uh, Unchained also has the metaphor of obviously animals being unchained. And Jane is kind of a universal name for female. So it's kind of like letting the maternal out. So it seemed like a good name. And uh, then what happened was I moved to L.A. and uh, Facebook Live came along. And for my career, which I was in the news business for 40 years. Wow. Everything was pretty much the moment I did my very first live shot in Fort Myers, Florida, my first job, I was the first reporter to go live in Fort Myers, and I'll never forget it. The news director said, we're going to have you go down to the courthouse, and you're going to go, and you're going to talk at the same time as the anchor is going to talk in the studio. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing. Wow. But it was the very first live shot. Ever since then, I was live, 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 live. So... um when Facebook live came along, I was like, hallelujah. I don't have to edit these things for eight hours a day. We can just go live. We can go live at veg fest. We can go live at vegan restaurants. We can go live at, uh, and I urge everybody to go live. When I say we should go live, live. 
<laughs> maybe one why day. why do you think it's so good yeah we haven't tried it yet what do you like about it? i mean i guess it's the editing real, part and, and everything is there yeah is it more powerful you feel yeah. too like you get your message out more yes you get your message out immediately we have no time to waste the clock is ticking True. every right. second there's somebody who could wake up and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to wake people up wake up america wake up canada wake up exactly. europe you know, wake up Mm -hmm. If you think you're a good person, but you're buying a product that involves extreme torture of animals, there's a disconnect there. If you think you're eating healthy because you've been brainwashed about protein, when there's more protein in kale than there is in steak, you're, you're setting yourself up for a heart attack. If you're eating processed meat and you think you're just eating a high protein diet, but you haven't really thought about the fact that the World Health Organization declared processed meat a cancer, cancer causing substance, a carcinogen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to wake the world up and every video we've ever done, even the most unsuccessful was viewed more than the average um, speaking engagement of uh, a vegan activist who's speaking at a veg fest or at a mm -hmm. conference. Every single one. Right. That's good. And to even know. the worst video, if it's viewed by just a few hundred people, it's reaching more people. And so um, when Facebook Live came along, it was like, yes. And then I started realizing very quickly wait a second, just me. And uh, I mean, I can't do this all alone. This is a global movement. So then we started adding citizen journalists onto it. In fact, I would love you guys to be citizen journalists in in uh, Vancouver. We need a more a, you know Canadian presence. And I work very closely with Anita mm -hmm. Crines of the Save Movement. She's one of my heroes, and she's in Toronto. But I realize you're on the other coast. We are. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, we want people to go live everywhere. I left my coffee across the room. So. Um, you know, that's that's super important. It's super important to get everybody using this technology. Here's the thing. I was in mainstream media for 40 years, as I mentioned. There is a mainstream media news blackout on animal rights. OK, right. why? Look at the commercials, meat, dairy and pharmaceuticals. I mean, does everybody have constipation in the world? Yeah, Every right. Time it's on the TV, it's some disgusting commercial. I find the United States is a lot worse with that. I mean, we get it, but when we go down to the states and watch the TV, it's like double. In Germany, it's quite bad though. Germany is bad. Too. Not as in like the Americans, but it's still pretty bad. But we don't get the constipation ones. We get like allergies yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, my dog for a second. yeah, no yeah, worries. Nice oh, yeah, tell us again <laughs> how, how did you um, how can people adopt dogs like the ones you have? And yeah, how can they rescue them? Yeah, oh my god, do you have a let me show you another one? Okay, during the COVID 19, Aww. I was doing an interview, a live interview with Shannon T of Beagle Freedom Project. She talked about the importance of a, of fostering animals during this crisis because the the uh, shelters are shut down to the public, and um, some people are abandoning their dogs for financial reasons. Which I'm sorry, if you can put a donut in your mouth, you can still feed your dog for your cat. Right. So I said. Everybody needs to foster. And then I realized, uh-oh, I'm everybody, even though I have three, already had three dogs and a cat. So I said, okay, I'm going to foster. And I said, my neighbors are already like up to here. I'm going to find the smallest dog I can. So I went on Los Angeles Animal Services website where all the dogs are listed. And I found five pound dog who had been dumped at the shelter. Aww. This little, this little angel. Aww. And I, I, um, I went, oh, Beagle Freedom Project, which is a great group that rescues animals from laboratories, a lot of beagles, but other, other breeds as well. <clears throat> they delivered her right to my doorstep. We social distanced, and I got her. And, of course, I'm a failed foster. I'm not letting her go. And uh, she's just an angel. And the idea mm. that anybody could have dumped her 
after 12 years or more is just beyond my comprehension. Look right. at this. Girl. Look at this. Look at this. Aww. I named her Tiny Dancer. <laughs> nice. Uh, after the Elton John song. But then a friend of mine said, you shouldn't name your dogs like they're racehorses. You should name them like people so that um, we understand that these are individuals. So I thought about it mm -hmm. and I said, okay. Her legal name is Gertrude Mitchell, but nice. her stage name is Tiny Dancer. Beauty. I like <laughs> it. So cute. I like it. So uh, how do you stay positive in a world where, like, most people don't really understand <laughs> veganism and and things like that? Like, I know it's, you know, we're fighting and fighting, but, like, yeah. We have how to do justify we, How do we stay more. positive? Is it the, you know, getting the satisfaction of people telling you, you know, you changed my life, I went vegan? <clears throat> like, things like that. Well... I quote Ingrid Newkirk, who says, being sad doesn't help the animals. Yeah, fair enough. And when you're walking around morose and bitter, you're not attracting people. Nobody wants to be like you. Right. So this should be a movement of attraction as well as persuasion. Yeah. Right. So yeah. being sad and being bitter and being negative is not going to help. Now, that doesn't mean you should hide your emotions. There are things to be outraged about. Of course, yeah. So many times for me, especially. Yeah, right, but if you're not it. like, if you're not healthy and your your mental state's not healthy, how can you, you know, spread a message that people are just gonna throw you down, right? So you got to be positive and think like that. For What's sure. a good way though? How do you stay positive? Like you, you have such a great source of so many things. I mean. I, I really use a lot of the program of 12 step, which says do the next indicated thing and stay out of the results. If I started thinking, <laughs> will every single thing I do have a result, I might not get out of bed in the morning because I don't know. Do I know that plant based neighbor is going to be a success? Yes, but. <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, everything's a gamble. You got to take risks. Sure. I mean, when I started Jane Unchained, people laughed at my face. When, when I was in mainstream media and I expressed my veganism, people laughed in my face. I had been ridiculed. Every vegan has been ridiculed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're not vegan you unless know, you've first been First they laugh at you, then they get angry at you, and then they join you, right? That's very Isn't that true. What they <laughs> That's yeah, right? what they say. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So uh, how did you come up with the plant-based cooking you show? You like this? Look on... at this. Look Ooh, this nice. Oh, that's a cool sign. <laughs> did you paint it's this? It's a painting. It's a painting. <laughs> wow. It's a painting. Did you yeah. paint that? No. <laughs> oh. Lefou. That's He's awesome. He's a great vegan artist. Lefou is a great vegan artist who painted it. Is he French? Um, Sounds French. I believe so. Yes, I, oh, I okay. believe so. He speaks French, and he's here in L.A., and he's an incredible vegan artist. That's awesome. And... Um, he does a whole series called Vegan Club oh, of yeah. famous vegans. Hmm, interesting. And he did that painting, and I got it at a PETA gala. PETA's auction? Auction or something. 35th anniversary gala. Wow. Oh, wow. And I saw it, and I said, I need that painting. That painting says it all, and of course, <laughs> the donation to PETA at the same time. So I never you. had that soup, actually, because yeah, the when Campbell I moved soup. to the States... Yeah, no, when I moved to North America, you know, I, I, I saw the Campbell's soup, but I never had it. So I was already <laughs> vegan when I saw it. So I yeah. don't even know how it tastes. <laughs> I think there's some vegan Campbell's soups. You know, yeah, must I think be. There um, is. Yeah, I'm going to decline this. Please don't disconnect me from a call. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, uh, where were we? Talking about Campbell's soup. No, we're vegan. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were <laughs> accidentally vegan products. Sure. I think one of the things that we have to do is realize that there are a lot of people who are um, eating plant-based now. And while we want to encourage them, um, we can't we can't just shame them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, while I was confronted into going vegan, and I do think confrontation is needed sometimes, I also think we have to recognize that it's a process, not an event. Right. Exactly. And that uh, what, if we got a lot more people to go vegan-ish, that would also be a victory for us. Anything that's going to reduce the animal suffering, reduce the climate devastation, reduce the world hunger. So 
I think right now people are getting comfortable with the idea of eating plant-based. Right. That's why I have a new show on Amazon Prime called New Day, New Chef. Right. We're That's what gonna, I wanted to ask you. just going to ask you about yeah. that. Yeah. How yeah. did you come yeah. up with so, that show? Yeah. Great it idea. looks amazing. Okay, so uh, it was actually my now ex-girlfriend, who's still a good friend, called me up yesterday. She goes, oh, my God, we I found accidentally found my... Our first face, our first lunch break live. What happened was, so we started going live at all these different events, and I realized we need more people to go live, not just me. So now we have more than 70 volunteer contributors around the world who go live. Wow. Wow. Um, we have Desi Verhoeven who goes live in Europe all the time. We have people who go live in Latin America. We have people who go live in New York. We have people who go live in LA, in Texas, everywhere. So, um, uh, uh, four years ago, May 18th, 2016, uh, we decide, I decided, we decided, whatever, to do a l lunch, us having lunch, making lunch live. And uh, we called it Lunch Break Live. And immediately it was a hit. Everybody wanted to see, what did you make for lunch? So <laughs> now we, every single day since that day, we have done Lunch Break Live. Wow. It doesn't matter. Christmas, New Year's, Fourth of July, whether it's a cookout, whether it's somebody uh, at eating at a restaurant, whether it's somebody making food at home. Pe somebody goes live on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell. It's Jane Unchained Facebook. You can also access it through janeunchained.com. So, um, you know, some people like my non-vegan friends would snicker. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. I said, well, we'll turn it into a show one day. And yeah. so um, what happened was that um, through my dear friend, Gianna Simone, who is a wonderful actress, activist, vegan activist here in Los Angeles, she has a great show called Love Gianna on Amazon Prime. And I had done a documentary on Dr. Silas Rao called Countdown to Year Zero. And I was looking to put it out there. And basically, Dr. Rao is a genius. Uh, he was instrumental in the acceleration of the Internet speeds. He's a vegan. He, want, he says, we're going to create a vegan world. We're going to do it by 2026. So Vegan World 2026 was born. I did a whole documentary about that. And I wanted mm. to. I followed him to Costa Rica, where he talked about reforesting farmland. Uh, it, it's 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 a very interesting documentary because he's an interesting guy, um, and he has a real vision of how we're going to create a vegan world. First of all, he was the first person I ever heard say, "We're going to create a vegan world. We're going to do it by 2026." If you don't set a grand intention and give a deadline, then you're just like blowing smoke, right? Yeah. So I thought, so true. wow, Very true. He's, he's giving us a deadline. He's setting a grand intention. I love this guy. And I started following him around it. Anyway, the documentary came together and I was looking for a way to put it on. And I met, I talked to Gianna, she had a show and she introduced me to the um, executive producer who helped uh, her get her show on Amazon. And he's a great guy, Eamon McChrystal. Um, he's a, a former Irish tenor, just really wonderful man. And I started working with him and he's really brilliant producer, director. Mm -hmm. So we put together this show, a uh, new day, new chef under the Jane Unchained, uh, nonprofit. It's not a show we are selling where we are raising funds and putting it out. And, uh, so now we're about to launch our second season. It's going to be very exciting. Wow. Very exciting. Um, and um, just go to Amazon, New Day, New Chef, Amazon Prime. Uh, I know it's available in the United States and the United Kingdom. I would love to get it available in Canada. Uh, but you hopefully can see it soon. I, I don't know if your audience is primarily Canada or the United States or global. But anyway, it was a breakthrough global. because it is a vegan cooking show shot in a studio. And it features some top vegan chefs. And it's showing people how fun plant-based is. Every time the blender goes on, we do a blender dance. It's, <laughs> a, it's a I saw the trailer. Yeah, the, the trailer, trailer looks, looks really, really good. good. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. So is there any uh, exciting future plans? I know you're probably more, constantly dude. any yeah. more crazier you're future always creating. plans you got going. And uh, where can the listeners you mean aside find you? Yeah. creating plant-based neighbor? If that's not yeah, enough. Yeah, that, that's not enough. Yeah, do you have uh, more to uh, offer? And a vegan cooking show on Amazon and, uh, and having a, a vegan a nonprofit that spreads the word globally about veganism. Sure. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> I, I also am on the board of uh, Rowdy Girl Sanctuary, and we're working uh, uh, to put out a, a resource center for farmers who want to transition. Mm-hmm. Um, so really we're working good. on that. That's an early stages, but basically it would be a uh, information resource where people can go who want to get out of this terrible business and still be farmers. You know, they, we right. don't have to give up farming. Farming is valuable. We're not anti-farmer. We're just anti-industrialized animal agriculture and animal agriculture. Right. And uh, we're also working with LULAC, the nation's largest Latino um, civil rights organization, on behalf of the slaughterhouse workers uh, joining their Meatless May. And there's going to be more to come on that. Um, but that's a meat boycott that um, is uh, being pushed by a coalition. Um, we, need, we need people. Look, okay, we're vegans. We uh, care about people as well, obviously. Uh, We care about the planet. Uh, We care about animals. Well, some people really, those things may not resonate with them. However, if slaughterhouses, which they have become epicenters of the COVID virus, then um, to force people to go in there to uh, slaughter animals because you like the taste of bacon, you are sending people to their deaths and their families' lives are at risk and their communities' lives are at risk. Right. That is not an essential product. And to, you know, President Trump under the defense, you invoked the Defense Protection Act to declare slaughterhouses critical infrastructure and uh, basically ridiculous. free the, the meat slaughterhouses from liability um, if these workers go in there. So they're being sent to their deaths potentially. Yeah. And many have died. More than 60 have died That's and many more are ill. So are you co-signing somebody's death when you buy a meat product? Yes. Potentially. Right. Potentially. Whereas these are hot spots, epicenters of the COVID epidemic. Uh, whereas, uh, they're being considered essential workers, which they are not. Wherefore, if they go in there uh, because they don't really have recourse to sue if they get sick uh, and they don't get what they need to. It's, it's, I mean, many argue that it's impossible to make these places completely safe because of the way they're designed. Right. Oh, of course. You know? yeah. Um, they're, they're designed to have people shoulder to shoulder k- killing animals and processing their body parts. So um, those people who care about workers, who care about fellow humans, you know, a lot of times they say to us, yeah, but I care about people. Well, if you care about people, don't send them to their deaths so you can eat a slice of bacon right. or a chicken wing. Exactly. People need to make that connection. That's okay. Now, yeah. Now yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, right. We gotta stay positive. Yeah, just joking. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all it's all connected, we don't have right? To stay positive. I don't think we have to stay positive, but I do think that I agree with Ingrid Newkirk. Being sad doesn't help animals, right. yeah. and we are now. I think our movement is winning. Beyond Meat Burgers, Impossible Foods, Gardein, Miyoko's, you know, the Natural Products Expo West which is here in Anaheim, which is the largest natural products expo in the world, sadly was canceled because of COVID-19 this year. But Mm -hmm. I've gone several years and I mean, it's unbelievable what's happening in the vegan movement. Daya, D-A-I-Y-A, cheese. From uh, Vancouver, actually. Yeah. (laughs) They have a booth booth that's that's the size of a city block. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. The world is going plant-based. Yeah. It's definitely getting better. It's hard to see it. It's hard to see progress in real time. For it sure. Is it is if you compare it. or if you if you get out of your vegan bubble, you know, you actually meet a lot of people that still don't make a connection with eating meat and COVID, you know? They, it's so separated, right? <laughs> so 
I guess that's... They just don't want their bad habits to be the cause of what's causing things, right? So they try to, like, say, oh, it couldn't be that. They try to, like, tell themselves that it couldn't be that, even though it's scientifically getting towards there, you know? Right. It's hard to change. I mean, we know, you know, in general, to change a certain habit, like Shane said, or traditions, you know, you you hang out with your family or friends, right? You want to belong. That's the thing, too. We want to always belong and don't want to be out like, oh, you're vegan? What? You changed your eating habits now? Like sometimes we worry too much what other people are thinking instead of standing up for what we believe in. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, look. Uh, I have a, a hat, which I could go put on, but it says vegan, giant words over the... I right saw here. that one before. <laughs> and I walk around, my neighbors avoid me. <laughs> I, get a I get a different reception when I wear... This is my Jane Unchained hat right here. This is my Jane Unchained hat. Yeah. But I get a different reception when I wear that giant vegan hat. I bet. Because obviously, they, you know, in the brain, the brain works rapidly. They make the connection. Oh, she's... She's saying we shouldn't eat animals. I eat animals. Okay, that's making me feel bad. I don't want to deal with that. Judged, Let me go yeah. in another direction. Yep. So hide your head you in know, the sand, look, right? <laughs> Ignorance right, is but, bliss, but, is from people yeah. saying. Yeah. Right, but 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 I have to say, a, I have my vegan family, and one of the incredible things, and that's why I think the show New Day New Chef is such fun and so important, is that we have a lot of fun, us vegans. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. We have more fun because at the end of the day, everybody who's eating animals somewhere deep inside knows that they're killing. Right. And that it's wrong to be doing it. Ours, our, our barbecues are death free. Our parties are death free. Right. Our cruelty free. There is a joy in that that they don't get. So we want to in we want to invite them into this more joyous lifestyle. Right. So many people are suffering from depression. Right. Well, look at what you're doing every day. You know, I covered crime for many years. When people kill somebody else, some other human being, unless they're sociopaths or psychotic, they experience remorse. They experience guilt. There is a truth to criminals revisiting the scene of the crime. There is a truth to that cliche. And um, the same applies with killing animals. It's just that society says it's okay to kill those animals. But on some level, everybody knows what they're doing is wrong on some deep level. Right. And that is taking a toll. And um, additionally... Your serotonin levels are determined by your gut biome. And so when you're eating all those disgusting meat burgers and all that stuff, it's affecting your gut biome and it's decreasing your serotonin levels. So when you say, how do you keep yourself up? I wake up very happy almost every day. I wake up and say, today's the first day of the rest of my life. Yay, what am I going to do today to make this world a better place? That's exactly. amazing. Yeah, that's and, a great. And you have yeah, amazing yeah. tools, you know, like your knowledge. You're like a super smart woman and you have people that stand behind you. You know, you, you, really, you really know like you can't do it by yourself. You know, even though you have the great tools, you need other people. Great team makes the like dream, Like you're the right? brains, but then you bring other people together. It's be it becomes like a vegan emporium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but let me say this. Jane Unchained is a team effort from it the is. beginning. We have yeah. 70 people. Uh, at least and growing and um Paige Parsons Roach who is our booker who's uh we have Danny Rukin the daring vegan in Portland I don't want to leave anybody out once I start I always get into trouble because if I name one person then there's 70 other people of course and they all do this is a team effort it's mm -hmm. a team effort and everybody is you know now we've got because of COVID we created all these shows okay so we have like anchors so we have Elizabeth Alfano doing the business hour. We have Lisa Carlin doing a medical show with Dr. Joel Kahn, a vegan cardiologist. Yeah, We've awesome. got um, uh, Carissa Kranz, who's a, a lawyer in Florida, doing a show called The Laws That Matter. We have um, Lindsay Baker doing a, a, an animal rescue show. So we're, we're really expanding and taking what at first looked like it might be a negative and saying, no, let's expand it and have a positive, right. you know? 
Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. Well, uh, thanks for taking your time to talk yeah, to us today. Thanks so much. I know you probably want to go outside and, <laughs> and get some more sun in the LA weather. We have yeah. some rain yeah, back in rain. Vancouver as <laughs> normal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, and sharing well, please, your knowledge. Everybody, go to janeunchained.com. janeunchained.com. Sign up. You'll get a newsletter twice a week. Promise it won't be more than that. And we'll keep you up to date on everything. Okay? Sounds That's great. That's amazing. We put it on our show notes yeah, we'll as well. Yeah, put it in the show notes so people can sign up and get all your wonderful cooking shows and, and, and updates. Yeah, and, and let me also give you the um, New Day New Chef because some of your people listening are in the United States sure. or in England. Yeah. And I'll also give you the link, which is coming out just today, to plant-based oh. uh, plant network.com. Wow. Sure. Wow. So Great. I'll give you that link, and I will you guys sign up? If it can do it here, sure. Yeah. <laughs> do it in Canada. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but yes, so if we were in the States, we would love to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like what you guys are doing, too. You're a great... Are you guys a couple? We're, yes, we yes, are. Yeah, we're, we're married. married. <laughs> uh, he wasn't a, even vegan. Couple. Thank you. He wasn't even <laughs> vegan when we met, but I just let him decide, you know, go his own path. But it, She gave me the knowledge, and uh, I took it and learned, and here we are today. Oh. It was my idea to well, start the, the podcast and yeah we got to spread the, the word so this is our way of giving giving back and we love guests like you you know to share your story because every story is so different you know and inspiring and we just love what you're doing we were following you the whole time and then we met you even in venice you know we ran when we went there when we were there yeah <laughs> so yeah, Small and world. Um, you you guys are a great couple. I mean, oh, thank you. I thank love you so it. And, and let me just say the last thing. When I was in Vancouver, wow, the vegan restaurants. Do what you can to keep them open. Go For to sure. supportandfeed.com mm -hmm. and check it out because you could start a, v a Vancouver chapter of Support and Feed, and that would help them. Well, a lot of our uh, vegan restaurants already give food to uh all homeless and stuff right now in first line no workers. but this oh, is this way like people a... donate to oh, it's the a, restaurants it's a donate to them to do it oh, okay. ah gotcha Ooh. that's even better so yeah. they're getting the money because sure. they need money to keep going yeah no doubt that's so true yeah, yeah good for point sure. well yeah. thanks so much for everything you do you're a living legend and uh okay. we we can't wait to see more. I mean, of course, time. you are and you, your whole um, group, you know, everyone that is with you on board, you know, is doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. Even if we didn't meet them all, we appreciate you guys, you know, mm -hmm. all you do. Definitely. Thank you, my dears. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Have a great Thank weekend. You. Take bye. care. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Ciao.